little hope. We need to find a way out of the woods, follow the trail, stick together. Also, don't get killed by monsters. We are in serious risk of being killed by monsters. But hey, everyone's all together. Angela's back. We don't know how she's... Look out for the girl. We have to stop her. Pretty sure she'll be back real soon. We don't know. Oh, sound crazy. go that way or that way? What if saving our doubles from execution is how we save ourselves? I was only hunted after my double was killed. Well, it's too late for most of us in that case. There's something there. Is anything here not falling apart? No, it's a ghost town. Historic restoration warning, dangerous, unstable structure, sight unsafe. Hmm. Can I not? Oh, no, there's like a... I, you could step over that. That's not a big deal. Fireflies. That's what's causing the glow. Looks kind of beautiful, don't you think? Kind of weird looking. Save me. My apologies for the lateness of the hour, but I must speak with you. What ails you, my friend? It is Mary. I am troubled by her, by the part she has played in these trials. Those trials trouble us all. There is more to this. I saw her smile as her own sister was executed. She took pleasure from it. Are you certain? I am. But now that she speaks of guilt and remorse, it is hard not to believe her. Keep away from her, Abraham. No good can come from being with that child. Too late. With her brother and sister gone, Mary now lives under my roof. Your charity places you in grave danger. What do you advise? Tell the court you suspect she toys with us all. That you saw her delight in her own sister's death. I implore you. I am torn. Mary seems full Keep of remorse. Keep suspicions to yourself, and it's our community which will suffer. None of us is safe from her wild imaginings. Very well. If the court will listen, I will speak. I am bewitched. You're not bewitched. How else can your presence be explained? I, I can't explain this, but you're not. She has conjured you to defend her. To press me into silence. Only the devil could create a demon who so resembles me. I'm not a demon. But we do look alike, which I agree is pretty damn weird. What do you want from me? I want to know what you're going to say to the court. About Mary. I was decided to speak to the court. Now I'm not so sure. I know how this must look, but you have to speak out. Tell everyone what the girl did, like your friend is telling you to. The devil has sent you to tempt me. I must not succumb. Little Hope is no longer the town I knew. Strange and disturbing events have become commonplace. You, whatever you are, are but one of these. Revealing the truth about Mary may save my friend, but it does not sit easily with me that in doing so I condemn a child. Uh, well, I mean, actually, the priest seems pretty bad. Putting it all on a kid isn't right. The priest is the one driving this whole thing. That's way off. We gotta stop the kid. No other way to do this. Reverend Carver is a man guided by God. No one can doubt that. Daniel, why didn't you have my back on that? You've seen these visions, too. Bad move there, man. 
Standing up for the kid is probably gonna do us all in. I hope you're wrong. For all our sakes. What happened? You get a chance to confront Mary? Nope. We never even saw her. Fuck. Let's see something. Uh, okay, got two new bearings. We got Lost. His lookalike. Okay, so now we now have finally met Andrew's uh, past version, Abraham. Said that Mar that Mara was a victim. Interesting. That's considered to be a head choice. And what, so would the heart choice be say to say that uh, to condemn Mary? I I don't know. Joseph advised Abraham to speak out around against Mary's maliciousness, but will he? And can we actually change anything that's happening in the past? We met up with Andrew's double, Abraham. He was thinking about testifying against Mary, but good boy Andrew talked him out of it. That's not really how it went. Are you fucking kidding me? We are seeing glimpses of what happened here hundreds of years ago. How you doing? Ago. Not great. Demons from the past? Don't know how much more of this shit I can take. One thing That's I correct. didn't see coming, well, I feel like one of the team. Makes no sense. I'm good with that. It never happens to me. Yeah, I hear that. Learned a few things about myself tonight. Shame I had to be from witches and ghosts. We need to hear... I, should I sing? could have used one of those, uh, what do you call it? A paladin, a holy warrior. <laughs> holy shit. I never had you down as a game geek. There's a lot more about me you don't know. I'm full of surprises. You'll see. We need to get moving. the knife, Daniel. You have the knife. Taylor! Where are you? Taylor! Um, well, I don't think... That was, a, like, a deer, I think. Taylor! Is that you? to me. Whatever happens, do not let go! Um, yeah, no, yeah, help out. Help me! Don't let go! I'm not go. letting go! There you go. The Goku method. move okay what the fuck is that thing it's you we already know this taylor it's you it's your dead body from long ago let's check that out it'll get us out of these damn woods and we can talk on the way what no are you okay taylor how you doing seem pretty calm about it oh by the way uh T taylor by the way <clears throat> The cake is a lie. Am I right? Eh? I thought you'd appreciate that.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen we've seen these before. Mm, that it? I always feel like they should say something to acknowledge that we that they see it. But it seems like frequently they don't do that. back there with that thing um well let's hope it's gone whatever it was it's gone and it ain't coming back i really hope you're right only a matter of time before they come after us again that's a pretty negative outlook you got there um eh, i don't really like either of these there must be something we can do Mary's in the middle of all this, that I'm certain of. We don't know for sure that stopping Mary will help us out. It's just a theory. Another theory was setting fire to a doll would get rid of Mary. And how did that work out? It may only be a theory, but right now it's all we've got. This is a one-shot deal. We get it wrong and there's no replay. It's game over, so I'm up for doing whatever it takes. Come on, let's take a look. I guess Angela's a gamer girl as well. Something over there. All right, well, we finally found another one of these, and it seems like John's monster is going to put him in a serious headlock. But I might as well see if there's anything by the barricade over here. Any glowies? We gotta find another route. I... I don't know. That's not very deep. You could probably get across that. It doesn't look impassable. But, I mean, they say that we that we can't do it. I guess we can't do it. Mayor Hal's land deal fears protests will surely escalate as closure looms. Smart old-timey news voice. Right, there are protests about the factory. Remember the, jo the job at the factory is in peril? Everyone might get laid off. You just don't understand the stress that he's under. That's why he has to drink every night. Vote Kava for mayor. 666 for future prosperity, Samuel Kava. Have we seen like a, a past version of him? Or is that the Reverend? Like, is his name Reverend Carver? I forget if it is. Uh, nothing back here, I guess. Check this out. Hey! That guy's a menace. Yeah, I don't know why you say so. A mess we're in. Come on, inside. He's just saying hey. 
We could go down and talk to him. Well, no one's been here for a long time. <laughs> It's my turn to speak before the judge. I am filled with dread. I cannot know how my testimony will be received. The devil has blinded so many to what is real and what is not. Nothing good will come of this. His words will seek to twist the truth. Allow me to judge what is true. Abraham and Joseph are allies in this deception. And lest we forget, you condemned Joseph to death only yesterday. Or do you now question that decision? I have heard nothing today to sway my conviction. Joseph consorted with the same malicious force as his wife. For this, the court thanks Reverend Carver, who faced the devil's wrath to present the evidence. It is only my duty, Judge. Now, however, this court is duty-bound by law to seek out the truth. We must therefore examine these claims made by Abraham against Mary. If I may speak briefly, Judge Wyman. Time is short, Reverend. Be indeed brief. Mary has shown great fortitude to speak out against the evil here. Many would have lacked her courage. Yet her reward for exposing this brooding covered in our midst is to be besmirched. Her courage is not in question. It is her intent we must be certain of. Her accuser is the very man entrusted to care for this innocent child. Plain to see, he is not fit for such a task. And I would ask the court to have Mary placed elsewhere. Who would you have be a new ward, Reverend? I am prepared to take responsibility for the child. If the court agrees. First, the court must hear what Abraham has to say. No decision can be made on the child until then. Abraham! What am I to do? Some would have me speak out against Mary, but could a child truly be capable of such evil? Ah, uh, well, I mean, you're probably going to die for this, so I'll be sympathetic with you. This is tough. I get that. It would be for anyone. Mary, it's just a kid. Tell the court what you have come here to say. Speak up, boy. Out with it! Mary has spoken of evil spirits, devilry and witchcraft. Things many cannot believe could exist here in the I'm not here for history and hearsay. Get to the point, boy. Mary is tormented. The apparitions she has seen, they have plagued her, stolen her innocence. Some suggest she is in league with these creatures, but no one can be certain. Myself, least of all. Can any of us truly know a child's mind? You claim I lack the ability to see the truth. I beg forgiveness. I would never suggest such a thing. My time is not for wasting. You and the priest have irked me enough for one day. I have more to say. I have already given you enough time. Furthermore, Mary is to be placed into the care of Reverend Carver. Now stand down. Tell me everything. Did you see Andrew's double again? He told the judge that Mary did nothing wrong, like she's the victim here. Oh, that's bad. Very, very bad. Shit! So what happens now? This helps us. Has to. We now know for sure that we can alter what happens. Do we? What do you think? Is he right about this? Eh? <laughs> Looks like Daniel isn't convinced. Normally, I'd agree with you, but we can see these events. Somehow they're running parallel to us, so I think we can change them. What the fuck? We can't stay. Let's get out of here.
All right, got to explore the factory. That's very clean, actually, under that. Look at those outfits. This place shut down way, way back. Life as a kid in the 70s. Everything was ahead of me. Was Angela alive at the same time as her previous incarnation? It sounded like that's what she just said. There's got to be another exit. Maybe on the ground floor? In memory of James Clark, 1929 to 1972, sadly missed by his many friends and colleagues. I forget the name of the father or what their last names were at the beginning. I don't, for, I don't know if that's him. Hmm, what do you think this means? It's written in ancient runes. Let's see, it's to Mr. Vincent Barnes. Dear Mr. Barnes, subject employment warning letter. Following our recent disciplinary meeting, I am writing regarding your attendance and behavior. Management has made every effort to accommodate your difficult circumstances and recent injury by accepting your recurring absences. However, continued warnings regarding attendance, lateness, and intoxication have prompted us to issue a formal written warning. Further repetition of this behavior or other misconduct within the next 12 months will result in dismissal. Ravenden expects our employees to be enthusiastic, punctual, and sober. You must acknowledge receipt of this letter. Please sign and return it to the foreman's office within seven days. Unreadable? It doesn't seem like there's anything else at the bottom. Maybe it's the person it's, it's from. Anyway, we see the recipient's opinion about this notice. I guess we're not interested in that. Secret found. Get over okay, yeah, good. You see this. Good, you noticed it. I was going to say, is, is he not going to notice that they look like them? This is too fucking weird. <sighs> this is too much. Way too fucking much. First, a load of weirdo witch killers from ancient history look just like us. Now, we got the creepy family of the year winners who also look just like us. What the actual fuck? What does it mean, though? Do you think they died like the other lookalikes? No clue. Who knows what happened to them? Maybe we're all stuck in the same nightmare. You really want a souvenir from this night, from this place? All I know, I'm keeping hold of this. What you said about all this being a nightmare, you mean that? If it's my nightmare, why are you guys all in it? Any of us could say the same thing. I don't know what's real here. Are you the real Andrew? Oh, come on. So wait. Who are those people in the photograph? Maybe time is fucked up here. Like, that really is us in that photo. But they're around the same age as us, as far as I can tell. What's the story here? She leave him for some other guy? Tan Vince. Okay, so I guess that is confirming that Vince was indeed the boyfriend from the start of the game.
Oh, okay. There's something down there. Thomas Wyman, 1643, 1701. Thomas presided over the conviction of several witches in Little Hope. He later regretted placing so much, so much weight on a child's testimony. The current factory was founded on the site of Wyman's residence. Doesn't seem like he lives for too much longer after these visions we've been seeing. Samuel Notchett, Lewiston, February 6, 1693. Having read Captain Bond's letter attesting the affair within Little Hope and heard the petitions of the townsmen, I write to express my single, my signal concernment. Pastor Carver's teaching strayed from too, true doctrine and piety. His mind wandered from the fellowship of saints and surrendered into sin over many years. Please attend to his past behaviors, which, it, which infect and corrupt the town. I ask a commission be appointed to examine the affairs of last year, including the matter of the girl. Thy servant, Thos Wyman, judge. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I jumped the gun on executing all those people. Seems silly now in retrospect. August 8th, 1973, Little Hope Factory to close. Hundreds of layoffs will gut the town. Nearly 600 jobs are said to be lost in Little Hope when the Ravenden Textiles Factory closes its gates at their Harvard Road site in September. Layoffs will include workers at the main factory and ancillary, ancillary businesses across the town. The decision was announced on Tuesday by Hazel Carver, a, direct, a director in the family business that had been the primary employer in the town for over 160 years. With great sadness, we have made this decision. We considered the workers at the factory to be part of our extended family and know how much Ravenden means to them, but we can no longer continue to run the business. Dialogue with the Carver family, said McCarthy. But while the daughters have been receptive to the union's ideas for saving the factory, Maya Carver had rejected them at every turn. He went on. We want a partnership with the family to save the businesses and the livelihoods, but it seems as if the mayor does not accept partners. Another union worker who did not want to be identified expressed this bitter opinion. This is all about the land. The Kava has owned the town for generations. If they can't profit from the land, they'll shut it all down. As the main source of income for the majority of the town's families, many are worried about the future we'll bring. The factory closing will gut the town, one factory worker told the Herald, adding, Wait. Farriman, bus drivers wanted, full training given uniform provided. All right, I guess, uh... At least there's jobs for bus drivers. Speaking of which, we still need to find ours. We haven't mentioned the bus driver, you know? No one's talked about him for a while. We're just very fixated on the little girl and the monsters, which I understand, but it seems like we just kind of forgot completely about the bus driver. Dope? Don't do it. East County Commission factory closure. The factory has been closed due to liquidation of Little Hope Textiles Limited. Following several incidents since the closure, the factory has been placed off limits. Attempts to ent enter the premises will be treated as a criminal trespass. Oh no, we're breaking the law. Any former workers wishing to retrieve property can contact our office at 555 Can I? Okay, there we go. Wasn't able to move out of there for a second. Okay. So what's your theory, smart guy? We're dead. That's what I said to Taylor. We're fucking dead. You hear that? Right below us. We need to find a way out of here. Now. Finding a way out of here is kind of what we've been doing. 
I don't know if we can really speed up the finding a way out of here process. Well, I mean, we could if we just didn't read these files, but you know, priorities. Tragic, okay, 1972, tragic fire caused by child's toy. The cause of a horrific fire at a Little Hope family residence this weekend may have been a child's toy. D Lieutenant David Farr of the Little Hope Volunteer Fire Department told the Herald that the gas range in the kitchen had been left on and a child's doll set near it. He believes the doll caught fire and fell off the range, setting the kitchen ablaze. The fire resulted in five deaths amongst the Clark family. One survivor. Oh, there was a survivor. Anthony lived. Anthony Clark, 18, has been questioned by police after being arrested on suspicion of causing the fire. However, the fire investigation is now thought to exonerate the young man who will be released today. The family's minister, Reverend Leonard Carver of St. David's Episcopal Church, said the fire was a tragedy. It's terrible for a family to be decimated. They have been going through a difficult time recently, as many families do. But they were a good, hot-working, and loving family, and I was helping them through the troubles. It's a tragedy that it should end like this. No day for the funeral has been arranged. Both the fire department and the mayor's office praised the swift action of police officers who arrived first on the scene and were able to prevent the blaze claiming its six victims. Officers Reynolds and Hoffman's quick thinking prevented another death, said the mayor, who recommended the men for accommodation. Marine Veteran Reunion at the Third Force Recon Vietnam, location veteran, no, of the Third Force Recon, recon from the Vietnam conflict. Location Veterans Hall, Northbridge, MA, February 12, 1400. So, all right. Now this is the first time we've actually gotten an answer on whether Anthony died. He did not. So, everyone else is dead. And I guess that's why he's the only one Vince is apparently talking to. It just doesn't seem like he sees any Vince seems sees anyone else, I don't think. He keeps talking like there's only one person there. That's heavy. Andrew, get your ass over here and help me out. Why are we doing that? What's up? You take that side, I'll take this side. Push together, right? Good. Now, push! Whoa! What were, what were we trying to do there? want to use the last bullet. I mean, come on. We only have one bullet. Oh. There you go. Is that what that was good? Okay. I didn't actually mean let go of the thing. All right. Was he was he gonna do that regard? I don't know what he was gonna do that regardless. go before anything else happens.
All right, at least he, he fought the thing one on one and survived. So that's encouraging. We're treating it's like they're treating it the same way we did with Angela, where she fell and it's like, well, I guess she's done. Where the fuck are you? Answer me. You see Daniel out here? No. He's not here yet. Okay, let's keep going. Daniel will be okay. He'll catch us up. He'll catch us up? If you so say, John. You okay, Daniel? Yeah. I got to. Over here. Yeah. Answer me. I'll answer you. We'll get him back. I feel like we're. Fr I feel like that was not re reasonably explained. Andrew, hey, you guys, I'm up here. Boy, am I happy to see you. At least I'm not the only one damp and disheveled. <sighs> I thought I'd lost you. Can't get rid of me that easy. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, Angela's monster is pretty slow, though. You spotted that kid, Mary? Not seen her. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention anything about it. I guess not. Try to forget I just saw this. Released. Mr. Clark leaving the Little Hope Police Department yesterday. A line has been drawn under the tragic case of the Clark House fire. Onlookers watched as Anthony Clark, the only survivor of the blaze, was released from police Thursday afternoon. One onlooker said, that poor boy, he must be going through hell right now. The Herald approached Mr. Clark for comment, but he is not. Blamed Clark, who was found with a box of matches in his hands at the scene for causing the fire. When Clark left the Little Hope Police Department, passers were heard to... Burn in hell. I wonder who's writing that. It sounds like that he went, um... That he was, um, unharmed from the fire. He was able to just leave. But there is a suspicion that maybe he caused the fire. And clearly, someone at least believes that. Oh, wait, was this Vince's car? Because we saw his car at the beginning. He dropped off Tanya. I don't remember if this is his car, but maybe it is. Or maybe Vince does blame Anthony for it. You see that? Stay on your toes. Anything could happen. No 
warn him that the hope is safe while you still draw breath, Joseph. You must die today. Not even your wife Amy was spared your lust to serve Satan. Damn me if you must. You're not fit. Speaking of my late wife. There is still fight in you. I must drive the devil out for the safety of everyone here. Oh, no one is safe. Joseph, do you renounce the devil and all his teachings? I got in no sin. I'm no disciple of the devil. I've found this infection with madness. Roy, you but six servants. Barely. We have to stop this. Now let's help Joe. There can be no more doubting. This is witchcraft. More stones. The devil must be crushed from within him. Do not flinch. The fate of little orb rests in your hands. And tell me. We don't have a lot of time. Time for what? John! What are you doing? I'm tired of running. Are you crazy? We gotta move! <laughs> um, y you know, let's not wait. Waiting around to watch you get yourself killed! This is She's probably right. Angela! Come on, you fucking ready! Uh, are you? You don't look ready. That's not John, is it? That didn't look like him. help out. Thank <laughs> you. 
um, yeah, help him out. Andrew, Andrew, I need you here. Don't move. I right, didn't help him out. We just stayed. Is it gone? I don't see it anymore. Place looks like it burned down. Something here isn't right. The sooner we get away from here, the better I'll feel. All right, well, let's have a look at, yeah, a lot of updates here, Team Taylor. Man, I'm not even sure when this updated. Daniel urged Andrew to leave and let go of the metal bar to fend for himself. Yeah, he did that. Vince assured Andrew he would go get help. And we kind of ignored him the last time he appeared. John asked for Andrew's help as the demon pounded the door. Should he have not done that to be more of a of a leader? Joseph advised Abraham to speak. Yeah, we remember that. A girl was seen in the backyard. That might is that now? I think that was now. Yeah. Burning the doll. I wonder I wonder what burning the doll did. It doesn't seem like it did anything, but maybe there's an effect at some point. Again, it's kind of hard to tell what any of these might be leading to. And yeah, we did get a third vision. So, monster appeared, a new one, and attacked John. But I'm kind of a bit curious about that, because one... I don't think that monster looked like John. And two, the old John, Joseph, was killed by being crushed by rocks. And whatever that was, that crawly guy, didn't seem like he had anything to do with rock crushing. Like, it didn't seem like it was exactly what I... It didn't seem like it was John's monster. What? What was that? that? Was that just a completely new character? No, what was that? <laughs> what was going on there? That's not anyone that we've seen in this game. Uh-oh. 
I guess let's head upstairs then. The Modern Guide to Successful Parenting, Dr. Andreas Vogel, is to publishing. Oh, this is the burnt house. Because, yeah, we found we, that book was. That book, that book was in the house at the beginning. And the tire swing out there is because this is where. Yeah, this is where she grew up. Well, I mean, a previous incarnation of her grew up. James and Anne, 4 November 1948. You're going to want to see this. Angela and I were married. This makes less and less sense. Can't open that. Nothing? One does have some neat movement, though. They don't notice me at all. They don't care. Opening the door probably would be a bad idea right about now. All right, we could go upstairs. Let's keep walking around a little bit first. Hmm. I mean, can't we just get, take that key, though? There's a key, like, hanging right there. It doesn't look like a key to, like, to wind a clock or anything. It's like a big skeleton key. But, uh, doesn't seem like I can do anything about that. No, it's not really. It's not acknowledging that. All right, I guess it's nothing. <laughs> Reverend Leonard Carson, oh, Leonard letter from Reverend Carson. Dear Anne, thank you for your letter regarding Megan. I understand your concerns and assure you that your daughter's rebellious behavior is not unusual. I've helped parents with similar issues and would be happy to help with Megan's moral guidance. Hebrews 12.11 says that all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Please see me after service on Sunday so we can arrange time for some personal instruction. 
Reverend Carson. Looks like everyone's coming to the party. This house is going to be jammed packed in a minute. All right, so we were already in, were in this room and looked at all the things, I think. The letter we just looked at. So I guess we're going up the stairs now. Which is over here. What's that? Most likely the girl up there. We need to find her. She's in here. Stay here. Hey, Bigfoot, find the goddamn vinyl, will you? Andrew, it's a trick. Somehow I feel like this is a valuable record collection. Wait, this isn't right. No way. I assure all gathered here today that our town will be free of the devil's grasp. Together, by God's grace, little hope will prevail. My word on it. This court is hastily convened, but with good reason. If we are to finally rid ourselves of the evil which has infested Little Hope, then we must act today. I accuse you, Mary, of witchcraft. What say you, Reverend? The evidence, as discovered through my investigation, is beyond question. Mary uses her puppet as a familiar to summon and serve the devil. We have been deceived by a child, by her guise of innocence. This puppet was mistakenly used to denounce Tabitha. But it has always belonged to Mary and Mary alone. She allowed her own kin to be executed as she watched in silence. That is not so! Liar! Now this tit, child, this creature of Satan has the marrow to accuse me, a man of God, of wrongdoing. This is crazy. These people have lost it. It was never my intention to bring harm to this town or its people. Then you will help me. What can I do? If I could do something to stop this, I would, but now in her hour of greatest need, I this child of the damned pleads once more for the Wait. devil's help. I beg the court's indulgence. Please guide me at this time. This I seek your counsel. Um, well, I mean, yeah, Carver seems pretty bad. We have to stop this. The only madness is right here in this court. Carver, he's the evil one. We have been swayed by malice. The truth hidden from us, but not by Mary. Reverend Carver is the one urging us to believe in the devil. Be silent. This is all You'll his doing. You'll not deceive doing. us any longer. Your true purpose is plain to see. I will see this town purged of all evil. He knows what he's talking about. Carver is the guilty one here. What must I do to bring little hope back into the line? I fear the Reverend and what he's capable of. I don't know if the doll is anything. I just stop Carver. You have to stop Carver. It's him, don't you get it? He's condemning Mary to take the heat off himself. I know what must be done here.
be still. What is the meaning of this outrage? What I have just learned sickens me to my core. There are serious questions which must be asked of you. What? <laughs> How can a man of God conduct himself in such a way? The evidence is right here. Mary, your suffering is at an end. You are free to leave. Fool! Misled by a child! Do you not see what she is? The truth stares at you from the depths of hell, yet you see nothing! The devil's daughter has deceived you all! Not me! I see her! I see her! Satan's fall! You will pay heavily for your crimes! I was one of the first to fall under your spell. Now all of Little Hope is mesmerized by you! I have not the words. Without you, I would be dead. You saved me. I shall remember you all, my dears. But I didn't save you. We should probably look at what our bearings say. Uh, let's see, two things. Andrew took, told his look like Abraham that Mary was a victim. Yeah, I, I was I'm a bit puzzled about the... I mean, yeah, we figure that Carver is a villain, but then, like, his Bible opens and he has, like, runes scrawled on the front page of it. It's like, what's this? It's the evidence right here. Andrew advised Abraham that Reverend Carver was a source of real evil and little hope. Andrew influences Double to defend Mary's innocence and condemn the Reverend. I do note that um, the thing about taking Mary's side and, con and condemning the Reverend is considered to be a, uh, a heart decision and not a brain one. You pulled one out there, man. Nailed the priest, got the kid off the hook. Good job. We should go. Tell me what happened. You see the girl, Mary? We're all done. Good to go. All thanks to my man Andrew here. I guess it's all over. <laughs> we never found the bus driver, though.
Oh, what's our updated bearing then? John was grabbed by a demon and crushed to death in the ruined house. Yeah, that is what he also offered. He took the drink from Vince. Taylor's neck was violently broken by a demon in the ruined house. And Angela was dragged into the basement of the ruined house and drowned to, to death by a demon. But I guess our, my, our man, our man Daniel, is still fine though. He's with us. He's with Andrew. Daniel survived the night. There we go. Sorry. I know it wasn't your fault. Both of us been through some real tough time these past years. About half a mile or so, there's a diner with a working phone. You call for help and you leave this place. And don't you ever come back. Ain't nothing left here for you. Hey, Daniel. You know, in our previous life, Taylor was your sister. That's pretty messed up, right? I'm real sorry for what I've put you all through. That's gonna haunt me forever. You're not alone here. Take it easy on We've yourself. We've all been through hell, hell right? We're finally getting out of this hell. Blame yourself. <laughs> you I just wish we all could have made it. The bus driver was our was in our in us the whole time. We finally found him. We had to look for the bus driver in our hearts. We're diverting all traffic through Little Hope. You okay, buddy? You seem a little confused. Yeah, I'm fine. I just want to get these folks to where they need to be. I doubt a short delay will trouble him too much. Can everyone just shut up? No, I get it. I, I understand what you're doing. Helping us find help or getting us out of here. Hi there. How you doing? Excuse me, but we're uh, looking for our bus driver. What? Have you seen him? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Sounds like you could use a drink. Better not, thanks. I need to keep a clear head. You shouldn't be drinking right now. I don't think it's a good idea. Drinking's all I got left. <sighs> Hurry! 
Hurry up! What the hell is going on in there? Get the hell out of here! I'll go once I look you in the eye. Now let me in! Hey! I don't think he gets how bad a mess we're in. Ah uh, yes, the memorable scene where Vince said hey and then we walked away from him. the bearing Andrew found the bus driver he was never far away I have some words I need with you that's it game over you're done for now, at least, you could always try again, see if you can get a different result. What different result? They were all fake. That's the problem with demons. If you don't lay them to rest, they will haunt you forever. Not a bad effort. Some found redemption, some didn't. No one found redemption. You're doing. They were just imaginary. And you eventually found him. The bus driver. Maybe he can now put the past behind him. I mean, you may not have written the story. You did pull it out of the bookcase for us to for us to experience. You could have pulled out something better. Again. Maybe in the Arabian Desert. Maybe somewhere else. But we will meet again. Yeah, yeah. I know. One more time. I'm gonna play the third one. All right. So, uh, does that mean that the whole witch trials thing didn't happen? That was all part of the fantasy as well? I would assume, because I guess that the, um, the multiple reincarnations didn't actually happen. Because it's not like, because the, the modern day family were all fake. It turned out that they died in the fire they didn't they didn't reincarnate in the modern day and everything that we experienced was i guess part of andrew's uh concussion related hallucination so i assume that also has to do with all the drama with the witch trials and mara so i guess they did indeed do the same man of medan twist where none of it actually happened which, I don't know. You can't really do that two times in a row. Super massive. Um, so, I mean, sure, the, the idea of a game about a tortured person who has to go through horrors to overcome their personal demons. Hey, sure, we've all played Silent Hill. But, uh, I don't know. It seemed... It, it seemed like m this means that most of the plot didn't actually mean anything. It was all just imaginary. Um, I guess the reason that three of the people died was I I needed did I was it that I needed to overcome the negative points of their personalities? Like, th did the choices I need to make? Uh, maybe were the opposite of those locked attributes, something like that. And maybe I only did that with Daniel. I wasn't entire. I wasn't entirely clear on what was happening there. Because uh, when they all died, you know, it zoomed in on the monster's eyes and you saw, like, 
these character traits with locks by them. And they all seem to be negative character traits. So I assume that the choices I had to make were whatever the choices would be that would... I don't know, get them to overcome those negative traits, I guess? Won't you spare me over for another year? Now, there was that one point where when we saw the house fire at the beginning, uh, Megan did cause it with a demon. But I'm thinking about the progression of the game. The first thing we see is Anthony driving the bus and getting into the crash. And then we see the house fire scene. So maybe that was just Anthony dreaming it and imagining that Megan had a demon. Because that just might be his version of it. Maybe he was imagining that Megan had a demon because maybe he actually was responsible for the fire. And that made him feel better to think it was actually a demon. I guess one question I would have is, does it matter if anyone survives then, if they're all just imaginary? Like, if everyone survived, or if only Andrew survived... Uh, does it matter either way? So when we were seeing the scenes of what was really happening, we only saw scenes of Andrew talking to himself, and we saw scenes of Andrew talking to Vince, and there were no monsters around. So if those are the only things we know were real, then as far I guess we can just assume that nothing else was real, including the girl, including the witch trial visions, including monsters. Uh, we don't act, we can't act, we don't actually have confirmation that anything might have been real. Only the conversations with Vince and conversations that Andrew had with his family, who of course were not actually there. Uh, I also assume that pro maybe Andrew himself can't actually die. Because what would kill him? Hmm... Like, it's a story that could be done well, but i am it's not clicking with me. And especially since Man of Medan also did the twist that none of the supernatural stuff was real. Uh, and they're doing that again. Do you believe in God? Absolutely not. We'll start believing. We are under attack by... I don't know what. You wouldn't believe me even if I tried. Hell, <laughs> I don't believe it and I was there. In Sumerian myth, they say the souls of the dead went deep underground to the house of ashes, where they lived on dust and plagued by the demons of the underworld. I mean, is she just going to be imagining it? They wouldn't do it a third time, right? Also, I guess that's what that vision was from. Uh, that was a, t a sneak peek of the next chapter, I suppose. Look at him standing there all smug. Like, oh, you did not see the twists coming in this enchanting tale. 
Yeah, yeah. You got me. I didn't realize it was all not happening. I mean, you might figure that maybe some of the stuff wasn't real, but actually all of the stuff wasn't real. All of it. Just like everyone, except, I mean, except our main character, of course, but even he didn't look like what we thought he looked like. Um... I mean, in Man of Medan, at least the ship is real, you know? In this one, it's like most of like what we're seeing as far as the town and the uh, the visions of the witch trials, and <laughs> none of that's happening. Which kind of brings up an odd question of, there were points when you had characters who were with each other and, and Andrew wasn't there. So what's that about? Was that part of Andrew's hallucination? Like, he's not actually present on the scene. I'm not sure how that ties... I'm, I'm, mm. Like, if everyone is a hallucination, then the guy who's hallucinating it kind of has to be there. Like, he would have to be in every scene in the game. Because why would anything be happening if he's not there? Uh... You gotta give, gotta have some of it be real. You gotta have some of it. You can't spend time with a lot of a story, of de, a story development if none of that story is actually happening. Hmm. Um. Huh. Well, as far as. Little hope goes. It should be the case that um, we should be able to start. It says new slot. Um, no, okay, I guess it's just restarting. Well, that's not what I'm looking for here. In Man of Medan, there was an option to pick. The, um, what was it? It was called the Curator's Cut, something like that. And what that was, was, um, you would play through the game, but this time by the, uh, through the Player 2 viewpoint. Because if you play this multiplayer, the different players get different viewpoints. So that's what happened, so that's what unlocked when you did the first, uh, playthrough in Man of Medan. Um... But I don't see an option for that coming up here, which is weird. Why would there not be an option to do that? I mean, that's just that. For that matter, that brings up another weird question of if, you know, you're playing a two-player, that means that, like, there's going to be plenty of times when you're not actually playing as... as Andrew. <laughs> as, uh, Andrew. You know, Anthony? Is, I forget if his past or present was, uh, was Andrew or Anthony. Um, view other games in the anthology. I mean, or we, there's Man of Medan, but that's the only one. Yeah, that's it. In Man of Medan, five friends set sail on a holiday diving trip that soon changes into something much more sinister. Four college students and their professor become stranded in the abandoned town of Little Hope. One bus driver becomes stranded in the abandoned town of Little Hope, trapped by in by nothing. They try desperately. He tries desperately to escape while imagining they must figure out. He must walk out of the town. And there's no third one yet. What are we looking at? Flick through some of the artwork. Sure, why not? Let's flick. With a pivotal role in the story, the colonial-style house will have an instantly recognizable form for many with a presence that immediately conveys a sense of house. 
The interior of the house is designed to evoke the 1970s and much classic horror of that period in a family home with a lived-in look and feel. Yep, it's a house. Pockets of light with pools of shadow create uncertainty and unease in Megan's room because rooms don't have shadows normally. The house fire is big and dramatic and comedic. The somber color palette of the funeral scene is a stark contrast to the vivid intensity of the house fire that precedes it and creates a bridge between the 1970s and present-day Little Hope because funerals are sad. Aftermath of Bus Crash introducing the one character and illustrates how the accident uh, confused him a bit. Fog itself is a key character in... No, it's not. It controls the journey of the characters. Yep, walk down a road. Little Hope is an American ghost town, void of the community that once gave it life. The buildings evoke this loss of humanity, loneliness, and isolation. I mean, yeah, they're ruined buildings. The macabre and unnerving... F I, it's, I, I guess it sticks, right? It's one of the first clues of previous pagan activity in Little Hope and begins to suggest the theme of witchcraft, which appears the taint in town... The, the taint of the town and the surrounding areas. The image of a young girl dancing around a fire in 17th century attire serves to connect the events of this game. It serves to evoke murdered soul suspect, which I have to say is not fair, but honestly, every time we saw Megan, no, Mary, that's just what was coming to mind. It just, I kept thinking of murdered soul suspect every time we did that. That's not the game's fault. It's just what my mind was was connecting. Also, in Murdered Soul Suspect, nothing was imaginary. I'm just going to say that. Further reinforcing the themes of loss and isolation, the skeletal form of the children's playground is a much-used horror trope that serves us well. Really? I mean, the, the playground was like less than five minutes. Pagan symbolism is a recurring motif within Little Hope. Many locations contain elements pointing towards the occult and witchcraft. Was there a dark past? I mean, we don't even know if there was, honestly. That might have been fake, too. Exploration of long deserted buildings in Little Hope provides players new information about town's history and maybe fake history? Possible connections with past events. From the outside, police station appears to be less dilapidated than other buildings. Search for help and assistance creates a small sense of hope. I guess if you say so. But the interior of the police station reflects the same abandonment seen throughout the rest of the town as hope turns to greater desperation. Striking silhouettes of oppressive fog throughout Little Hope's graveyard lend an appropriate ominous look and feel synopsis. They keep talking about 1970s horror. I didn't get like a 1970s horror feel from this. Were they going for that? Honestly, I did not think that this felt like a 70s horror movie. I, I really did not make that connection. Continuing the isolation theme, even a town populated in the 17th century, supported by shifting the color palette being present day in historical town. Exterior locations are broadly authentic, those be typical New England and Montevideo eras. Added a camera system to be used where appropriate in all future Dark Pictures games. Inside the museum is a perfect example of how they gave this look at the Yeah, so sometimes we get like a camera angle that's sort of like over the shoulder. Um, yeah, I guess that is new to this one. I guess that was not in Medan. Present-day town conveys passing of time, distress caused by time, reinforcement and loss. Every execution links directly to the events of the 1970s. Sure. John Justin Method, but in composition and presentation. So is um, Taylor being... That's Taylor, right? She's being burned there. In our version, she was hung. It looks like in this one, she's being burned at the stake. Church represents a further refuge that is fast eliminated as a place of safety. 17th century and present day incarnation of starts to center at the present time period. Location that's key to the opening prologue conversation, James and Anne's textile factory, absent of any industry. Arrival at Burnt Out, a recognizable colonial house near the climax of the game, powerful moment. <laughs> Closing of the narrative loop that suggests imminent closure. Brutal execution by crushing reflects a genuine historical penalty called a Pini Forti Eight Dure, used against those accused of a crime who refused to enter a plea. House that's seen blaze brings story reason behind the game plays confess the same face now has a very different feel. Family home begins a little hope story from a family home to an empty shell. 
There's Angela, that mature student, I should say. Andrew, Taylor, Daniel, John, Megan. Very impressive. Uh, designing the demons. What's that about? Ah, no, we don't need to see a video about that. Um, okay, it's just uh, looking at this. So I'm not seeing a curator's cut. I'm going to have to see if that's actually a thing in this, because I know that just like Man of Medan, there is an alternate second player view. But I don't see it unlocking here, and I don't know why. So I'm going to have to just check to see if there is anything that you can do with that. I'm not... Like I said, there was in Medan. I don't know why there wouldn't be here. Um, so if we did play it again for a second playthrough like we did with Medan, uh, I guess we could try other choices... Like, to see if you could get characters killed early, or making the characters angry on each other, or just saying nothing. Noth saying nothing is fun. Or trying to get Mary, um, like, t like t going against her and getting her executed. Like, maybe we could do that. Um... Would it be? Would there really be a reason to attempt to try to go for the all survivor ending, which I guess would mean looking up uh, all the choices you need to make to unlock those negative to I, lock unlock those padlocks? I guess. Um, I don't know if that ending would be significantly different. Like I'm I'm kind of guessing that the only difference in that ending is that they walk out of the house together and then when they walk up the road probably they're just all there and there's no other dialogue probably that's kind of what I'm guessing um I'll have to think about it uh we'll see I you know honestly I am more down on this than I was with Man of Medan. Man of Medan, I thought, started interestingly, and then I thought it got kind of dull, and then I didn't think the twist was very good. So I was like, eh, I don't know about this. But Little Hope just never got going at all. I mean, there was the bit where the monsters start ap started appearing, and the monsters seemed neat, and he had some QTEs against them. That's okay. But, uh... Aside from that, I just never really thought this got going, and then it turned out that the plot never actually happened. So I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. I just kind of don't feel that there was much of anything that happened here. Uh, like, like I said, a story about a guy going traveling through a town, having to overcome personal demons through horror. Sure, you could you can do that. I just don't think. This is a good example of that. <sighs> Which is kind of a shame, because like I said, I do want to like these. Um, but they just haven't been clicking so far. But there is apparently a third one coming. Maybe that is going to save the whole thing. Maybe. Hmm... <laughs> I was hoping this would I was hoping this would end strong and it just never got there. So I don't know. That's been little hope. We'll have to think about if it's worthwhile to go through it a second time. But for, the, for, for right now, hey. There you go.